Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. Now my new channel, my previous channel I used to have 400 videos on, but this new channel, Linux for Seniors, uh, I'm going to be making videos that are a little bit slowed down and uh, try to explain it uh, to the masses the best I can in a different format. I'll try to spend some extra time in other words. So none of my videos on my new YouTube channel will be less than two minutes under most cases. So I will try to cover as many details as I can depending on the subject matter. Today's subject is going to be Lubuntu. Lubuntu desktop. I'll talk a little bit about the desktop and give you a, an overview and a preview of this thing if you're curious. I have other Linux distributions on my YouTube site. I do encourage that you subscribe for multiple reasons. One is you can start this video and others and then hit uh, stop and then continue tomorrow or the next day or the following week. So you can do it whenever you have time. And the other reason would be you can uh, start seeing the growing library that I have and, and get informed. Usually you'll get a little post-it note um, if you have certain things turned on that you can see that I have extra videos coming up as a subscriber. But more importantly, my library is growing and it will grow. So let's take a look at this distribution. What do we have? Well, I'm going to use terminal for this job. There is a search feature here, so I can start typing T-E-R. In this machine, it's called Q-Terminal. Um, terminal uh, is something that most users shy away from that are new to Linux. I'm going to try to get you comfortable with a little couple of little commands. So I can do this a couple of different ways, but I'm going to actually use something that's already built in to show you system information called NeoFetch. Now NeoFetch produces this cute little logo, and this is actually the same logo as this bird over here, and it's just done with a bunch of characters. So this is Limbuntu. Limbuntu uh, 2204.1 LTS. What does that stuff mean? Long-term support. Now the desktop environment is LXQT. That's a little different than your, um, let's say your XFCE desktops or Cinnamon desktops or maybe Plasma desktops, some of that stuff. It's really not that important, but I thought I'd make mention of it anyways. So what I'm gonna do here is get you a little bit comfortable with um, with this, because I, I can show you uh, and give you a tour of this system, but I'm going to first cover this box because a lot of people get intimidated by this when they're new to Linux. Don't. You can uh, look, anyone can learn Linux, trust me. And a lot of the commands that uh, or things I'm going to be doing are all point and click, so you don't have to if you don't want to do this. But I'm going to punch up clear, and then I am going to show you my history of commands. Just to let you see this for a second, if I can spell right. So I installed um, two things using this terminal box. I installed this thing called Simple Screen Recorder. That is what I'm doing recording this video with. And these installation commands are actually very simple if I break it down for you. sudo just means super user do, this first part. It gives me elevated privileges to do something. This apt is a, it, it's irrelevant, but it, it means just an install command. And then the name of the software or package is ncal. That gives me the capability of running this command right here. And I'm gonna do this for you because this is, is can be fun to have with your friends and family. I'm gonna punch up the word cal. After I install ncal, you can get a calendar that looks like this. And you may be laughing, clicking, don't you have a calendar here? Yes, I do. However, this one is special. So if I put the word cal and space, I can put any month of the year. I can use the word January, for instance, or the number one. Then I can hit space and put a year. Do you have a friend? Let's say you have a b friend born in uh, 1962. Your friend born in January of 1962 may be born on the 9th. He or she was born on a Tuesday. You can have all kinds of fun with your friends and family and tell them what day of the week they were born on. 
all you got to do is do this. If you are wanting to do this for a new person, use the upper arrow key on your keyboard to repeat that last command. Then you can just change the month. So this would be number two would be February. I'll pick a different year. 1942 or I'll pick up maybe something more modern. 1992, how's that? It doesn't matter what year I plug in. So if you have a person born in February of 1992, maybe, um, well, that would obviously be a younger person. Uh, that person was born, let's say, on the 12th. They were born on a Wednesday. Here's a little bit of trivia for you. Just having fun, folks. I'm going to repeat the same command using the upper arrow key, Cal. I'm going to actually type this out. So July 4th. 1776 is Independence Day in the United States. What day of the week did July 4th in 1776 fall on? Oh, that's a good trivia thing. You can probably look that up on the internet. So this terminal box can do this for you in one second. July 4th, 1776 fell on a Thursday. That is the calendar from 1776. Now I'm going to punch up exit. Have fun. So let's give this a quick tour. So Limbuntu has a lot of features. Again, I pointed to the calendar. This is the standard wallpaper and mouse pointer. You have some additional stuff down here. This is my simple screen recorder that I'm using to record this video. There is my networks that I can access. I have different wireless networks in my home. And uh, there's a clipper, Q-clipper, a clipboard, and a volume control. All right, so I also have remove media. Now, the stuff over here is the program that I have open recording this video. And then show desktop is in case I have something open and I want to click that really quick and it'll minimize. The file manager for this distribution is called FMMAN. Uh, sorry, PC Man FM. I, I went backwards on that one. Uh, anyways, it's a fairly decent lightweight manager because this is a lightweight distribution. You have your home folders. You have your little shortcuts. And what are devices? Devices are, are well, they're internal or, or external hard drives or possibly USB sticks. I actually have uh, this one, I believe, is right protected. Yes, it is. And I believe this one is not. So if I wanted to copy some files out of this hard drive that is inside my um, computer, I'm going to try to copy wallpaper. And there might be some copy process uh, things in there that you may not be aware of. But all I'm doing is transferring some files. My pictures folder for this distribution is empty. So I'm going to paste that. And it's complaining about permission denied. That's fine. So I'll just hit ignore. And I'll wait till it to finish. I did download some wallpaper from that folder on that hard drive just to let you see that. All right, so I have some wallpapers here. And you can right click on these things and get other information. Move them, compress them. And uh, these are the different supported compressions. All right, not going to spend a lot of time on the file manager. Let's give you a tour of the system. So you have the computer, which shows my extra hard drives and all the, also my home folder. You have installation of Lumbuntu if you wanted to. I'm running the live copy if you're curious. How big is the image? It's around 2.4 gigabytes, I believe. It takes roughly somewhere in the vicinity, depending on what kind of computer you have, somewhere in the vicinity of 5 to 10 minutes to boot up. But you can boot up in the live mode without installing anything. And I'm actually running it this way. I, I actually manually temporarily installed this recording software so I can bring you this video. So here's my home folder, my networks I'm going to skip over, and my trash can. Nothing really major here. Here is their logo downstairs. It's kind of small, but anyways, um, I'm going to click that open. So you have all kinds of things. Leave would be like, um, you know, you're, you're, you're wanting to shut down or reboot or log out, that kind of stuff. You also have a search feature to go look for stuff. You've got a lock screen and you've got about. 
what is this thing? I, I gave you system information a little bit earlier. That was a little bit more detailed, but more importantly, that's what you have there. So um, let me start at the top with these little uh, lines going sideways. So accessories, these are the pieces of software that you will get on this um, live copy, which is kind of cool. So um, all of these are just different applications. Just walking through this stuff. And look at that. They have LibreOffice Writer actually on this USB. I'm sorry, mine is a USB stick, but on this live copy. Now, if you're not familiar with any of the Office suite, this is LibreOffice. LibreOffice is very similar to Microsoft Word, and it's you can almost learn very quickly using this. You can also save files in Microsoft format. It also has a spell checker. So if I put an extra T in there, it's not going to know what I'm trying to spell. If I right click on it, it should guess at it though. I'm, I'm, I was trying to spell test. You can also go to the file manager and save as, and I want you to let you see that there's different formats, including Microsoft Office or the older version of .doc. Lots of different formats. So the official installation, because I'm running this off a USB stick, believe it or not, um, I'm gonna do, do do not save. It will run a little bit quicker. So I'm actually running this directly off the USB stick. But it will be uh, the same applications installed when you do the official install, if you decide to try this out yourself on a hard drive. So LibreOffice has a suite of things, including Writer, which is like Microsoft Word. Math, it's even got a spreadsheet program. So sound and video, I did install a simple screen recorder using Terminal. Uh, but you do have VLC and the pulse volume control thing installed normally. Under System Tools, you have a lot of things in here, including that Terminal. Now, HTOP is a process monitor. It's normally ran out of terminal, but uh, it will monitor your processes and you can look at certain things in here. There's also one built into terminal and I'll open up and close this for, or maybe I'll just leave it. Yeah, no, I'll close it. Because I probably don't have a lot of resources with this USB stick. But I'm gonna put in T, E, because I'm looking for that Q terminal. And I'm gonna type in the word top. And that's also a process monitor that's built into just about every Linux distribution out there, running it out of terminal. Just wanted to let you see that for a second. This is not a terminal centric um, distribution, but more importantly, um, you can do a lot of installations through that. So there's a lot of different reasons why you probably want this distribution. Maybe you're looking for a small footprint. Maybe you're used to this in the past. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why people do stuff. So um, you can see the rest of the stuff. Here's another installation command under the system tools. And then their package manager is Muon. I am not sure if I can open this with a live copy, but I'll try it anyways. So this is called a package manager. What is a package manager? Well, you know, software. So if I were to pick something out of this um, stuff, let's see if I can find a simple game, for instance. So it starts guessing. Here's a shooter game. I'm, I'm not even sure what these are. But uh, more importantly, here's the mark for installation. And then you can apply and it'll install that. You can also check for your updates using this Muon package manager. And you can also use Terminal to install software. Let's move on. Maybe overwhelming for some folks, but uh, system tools. So there's quite a few things that you can do in here. And then you've got your preferences, your settings, in other words. You've got your monitor settings. Uh, if you wanted to change the resolution, I was currently in that one when it booted up and uh, I went into something different. And uh, more importantly, you just you can set up different resolution than hit apply. What other things are in settings? or preferences, or even system tools. There's lots of little uh, things that you can do. Additional drivers, possibly, um, some printers, 
screensaver, and then of course, where's the stuff coming from? So the stuff is coming from the um, Ubuntu or uh, Jellyfish. So Ubuntu software, conical. Some people are not familiar with that. So I, I don't have some uh, drivers installed, but I could install this driver for this particular video card, for instance. This is currently using the open source driver, so there's no proprietary drivers being used. But whatever your system has on it, you can, may want to look through that for after you, if you are installing this distribution. So that's over here in software sources also. So that's where the stuff is coming from because Lubuntu is based off of, I'm going to put in uh, QT this time, looking for that, uh, well, actually I'll just use T, E for terminal. So I'm looking for that Q terminal. I'm going to do a NeoFetch one more time. Uh, oh, I forgot the O. I'm sorry. So let's correct that. So the thing about spelling. Anyways, folks, just a little humor there. So Lubuntu is based off of Ubuntu. So you can just uh, think about it that way. 2204, long-term support. That's the only reason I brought this back up. What can you do by right-clicking on the screen? Well, you can create a new folder if you like. You can also, if you have something copied, hit paste. You can also select everything on the screen. And uh, you can also do some sorting, different ways of sorting things. Now the show hidden, uh, you normally don't have that in your um, desktop, but you could have show hidden in your file manager because you have some extra files that are usually stored in a hidden folder or file. Anything starts with a dot is a hidden something. Okay, that's a hidden folder. That's a hidden file. Bash stands for born and shell, born again shell history. You remember those commands I performed? The last one was NeoFetch. You remember I did the cal with the years on them? 62, 92, 17, 76. So those commands it remembers and stores in this little file here. And yes, this is actually editable. But I wanted to let you see where that those commands are stored. Now I'm going to right click and turn that off. Most people don't like to look at hidden files unless they're doing that on purpose. Hidden files and folders. So this is your home folder. You can create subfolders rather easily. And you can do that also inside of your, um, your subfolders also and create folders. It's pretty simple. There you have it. And you can put whatever you want to in there normally. And then if you have the luxury of a backup hard drive, maybe you have two hard drives, uh, maybe you plugged in a USB type of backup, maybe you plugged in a USB stick, they'll be under uh, devices. I have if you hold on just for one second, I'm going to grab a hold of a USB stick and plug it in. Apologize for the sound. I'm just walking in front of the, the microphone. So I'm going to plug in a USB stick right now. Okay, and it said uh, removable medium was inserted. And my um, removable medium is uh, right here. Or that one is right protected and this one is not because I have one USB stick that has two partitions on them. This one is formatted with uh, extension four and uh, it's got write protections on them. And the other one is formatted with something that is very common. So I could also drag files back and forth by making an extra window, which is a video for another day. But I wanted to let you see that you can insert uh, USB sticks and it'll appear in the device menu. So on that note, I will say, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've subscribed to Linux for Senior. Have a wonderful day.